time, Friday night, when a group of old broads get together to talk about their week in business. Hope you had a good one too. Well, hello, hello. Happy Friday. Tiffy time. Tiffy time. So I have my my my, my obligatory G&T for tonight. Me too. I need to buy more gin. I'm nearly out. This is my kill COVID germ drink. I hope that's gin. I hope that's what you're talking about. Oh, good. Excellent. It is. <laughs> so you've had a week. You've been a bit ill. I think I'm, I'm tired more than anything, just really doggone tired. So, um, yeah. It's now been six days. So, well, get some sleep across the weekend and take it easy. You're sounding so much better than you did the other day, though. I'm you're feeling. Not, you're not quite as um, foggy. Oh, it's really blonde. Really oh, blonde. Oh, look, I know what I'm like when I get a head cold, so I totally get it. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say something to me? Did we yes. just agree to do something? What, now what did I say I would do? <laughs> where, where am I supposed to be? <laughs> no, you're sounding a lot, lot better, which yeah. I'm, I'm very pleased to hear. Well, after your fourth bout of COVID. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, touch wood. Touch wood. I think the hardest thing has been, like, because mum's here, um, and walking around, like, I'm okay in my office and my bathroom and my bedroom, but when I head out in the other half of the house, it's masks and gloves and because mum's Making sure you wipe the services down, <sighs> surfaces down. Oh, mum's running around after me with a... <laughs> When 20, I feel a bit like Louis the Fly. Do you know, like... Um, oh, and, oh, she's been here. I'll spray you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, mum's had her vaccinations and everything, but she's Doesn't 87. She's 87. No, I know? know. And I just, it's just like this ultimate panic. And it's like I wake up in the morning and I, I listen and I can hear a cough or, or whatever and think, oh, thank goodness. And so she tests every morning before she comes down. So she comes down the stairs every morning going, I'm free. Good on her. <laughs> Good on her. No, I'm, look, I get it totally. I mean. It's just like, oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, and I think just the, the paranoia of it too. A little bit you know it's like oh, I don't want to be the one that gave it to my mum and it killed her oh don't say that oh please don't say that no well oh I know but oh wow I, I, <laughs> I know I got COVID and then Brad got COVID and he never got out of bed oh my god <laughs> do, do, do you know like I don't particularly I, I actually don't hold guilt around it because I was so damn careful mm -hmm. um but it was, I got COVID first and then he came down the day after me with it. Yeah. You would probably come down together with it, but yeah. I had a sore throat and a head cold and he got stage four cancer. <laughs> Doesn't quite seem quite right, does it? No, I'm sorry. So, uh, is what it is. I'm bloody, sorry. Bloody well, COVID. Like oh bloody COVID, it turned our it turns our lives upside down, didn't it? Oh, very much so, very much so. And I, I mean, everyone's want... life, everyone's life. Hmm. Still, I, I tell know. you what, if I hadn't have had that experience, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, and for that, I'm actually thankful. That's something I'm actually very thankful for. It it it, it turned it didn't give me an option to do anything else than what I did. And that was actually what I needed. That was the kick in the ass I needed. Kick, sorry, <clears throat> kick in the backside I needed. <laughs> I think I think you're right. I, um, at one point in time, didn't really know whether I should stay in Canada with Brad or come home. Um. <clears throat> And then oh, I but I think by that point you weren't going to get home anyway, honestly. By when they first started calling people home, he only had been diagnosed with a little tiny thing in his throat. And then I had made that decision that I just there was something there that I wasn't was really worried about. Um, and I stayed. And when they did the final the final boat home, 
um, in the March, I couldn't go on it because I wasn't seven days out of COVID. Yeah, yeah, well, that was my one's right because I, I know I got the notices in, um, must be mid February, mid March, I yeah. got the notices saying, you know, if, if, if you can get home, if not, shelter in place. No, sorry, if you're safe, shelter in place. This will all be done in, in the fullness of time. And um, I went, yeah, I'd, you know. And I think it was like the next day they started cancelling flights. So I had no choice. I could not get home. No. <clears throat> Which, you know, yes, there's a number of things that I, I wasn't here when my mum passed and all of that stuff. But I worked out what I could bloody well do <laughs> and what I could cope with, which was good. Yeah. <coughs> oh, honey. yeah. So what are we going to talk about this week? We've got so much to talk about. I think our planning session today went really well. Yep, and I think that's a really good thing that we're going to do um, once, a, once a month. We're going to do our profit and loss and review our profit and loss together. See so if we're sitting on our margins and um, and our targets. Yep. Um, and I think we said once a quarter we're going to sit down and do that sort of planning, didn't we? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think it's, I, I really appreciated it. It's actually given me a few things. I've got things written down here which I can now start transcribing to um, a plan and and a goal sheet, a dream board goal sheet. Yeah. Um, which is something I haven't done in years, is, is have a dream board. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. It was a bit of a shock actually sitting down and doing those numbers today too, looking at where some of my money's coming from, going, huh, fancy that. <laughs> what a nice shock, though. It know, was like... a nice shock. It was a nice shock. It really was. Once I got over that, that what did you call it, the bath? The bath club. <laughs> Bath. Once I got over that, it was a really nice job. Do you know, I think it, we just tend to get a little bit limited by stuff, whether we get a little bit, I don't quite know what the word is, but because I chose to, like last, last year, even though I only worked for a few months, it was, I couldn't earn too much because I couldn't go over that 75 or I was where I needed to be GST registered and I wasn't. So now that I'm GST registered, it's like there's no limit. There is no limit. Yeah, no. yeah and I think as I was saying to you, um, I, I ca I've carried a lot of guilt for a number mm. of years um, about things that have gone on. And I, I didn't, I don't think I actually realised how much I was carrying until, um, well, probably the last 12 months. Um, I know seeing my dad again really made such a big difference to, to where my mindset was at. Yeah. Um, and that guilt was actually around, I don't deserve to earn anything more than I need to live on. And that's really sad, but that's what my guilt was. It was, I don't deserve to earn anything more than what I need to live on. As long as I can live, I'm good. And whilst I don't want a shit ton of money, I think I'd like more than I get normally. Um, I'd like a shit ton of money. Yeah, okay. If I get a shit ton of money, I don't have to keep it all for myself. I just, like I said, I just want to be able to not have to. And I, it's not that I want to go out and blow it all. No, exactly. Um, but I just. Be nice to be want, comfortable, though, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Have that. Have that um, Buffer zone, that, that little mattress that you can yeah. fall back on every now and again when it, when it, when things go go slightly wrong. And yeah. like when I got <laughs> when I first got home from the UK, and like it took four months for my second lot of bags. Like we were down to three pairs of undies and two bras. Do you know? Like <laughs> I do. Because, uh, yeah, not this time around. But I have actually been in situations where you pull the pair of undies out of the drawer, and there's no elastic, and they're starting to fall apart, and you're like. I've just got to wear these because this is all I've got. <laughs> yeah, but that's because it was so expensive to bring baggage home from the UK. At one point in time, it was £150 for 5Ks. I know you were telling me. Yeah, this. so I could bring one one 
30 kilo bag home on my Qantas ticket, but the rest of it was 150 pound for every five Ks. Is so that what I you paid to get your bags over here though? No. No. Oh no, I pay, so I took I went from Perth to Vancouver and I could take two 23 kilo bags, which is what I went with. Yep. And then when I was over in Canada, I obviously accumulated Things like my snow boots and my... Well, you were going to live there. I mean, fair. I was. And my big parker and my big, you know, just stuff. And I ended up having three big bags and a carry-on and a, and a backpack. But to get all of, to get me three bags, a carry-on, a silver, like a silver pull-along carry-on yeah, yeah, and a backpack yeah, yeah. on the on WestJet from... Edmonton through to Gatwick was seven hundred Canadian dollars. That's not a lot of money. No, not at all. That's probably, I mean that'd be about a thousand Australian, maybe a little no, less. No, nope, it would be about seven hundred and seventy. That's really cheap. It was dirt cheap to get me and all of my belongings through to the UK. So. That was really good. But, of course, when it was then time to, I had to come out of the UK to get my stuff home was very expensive. So we ended up putting it on a boat, which I put on the boat a week after I left, which is about the 19th of March, and it arrived on the 6th of June, July, 6th of July. And that, that cost me 300 Australian dollars. That's still a lot of money. 150 pounds for them to come on a that's a still a lot of money to get your bloody luggage over. Hmm. Yeah, I, I know that um, when I'm heading back to Hawaii, um, one of the things I'm looking at is actually ordering clothes and having them delivered to Hawaii so that I can have a wardrobe in Hawaii and a wardrobe here. Hmm. And when I leave after a couple of months, just pack that all into boxes and have it there so that when I, when I head back again, it'll all be there. I backpacked my stuff. So I bought the bags, squished everything out, and I got um, – I don't know how it works for us. I'm not an engineer, but I got far more than 30 kilos into my bag. Because you take all the air out of it. That's why. Yeah. So yeah. things so – air, air, like, isn't, air isn't light. Air isn't um, weightless, basically. So my big – Brad and I had a beautiful big um, blanket on our bed. It wasn't hand knitted; it was machine knitted, but it was our our blanket. Your blanket, yep. And I, I wasn't leaving that behind, so I bought that home. So by the time I backpacked that, and like this big blanket is, but it backpacked into nothing, and then I backpacked all my clothes up. And um, I'll have to remember that. I might try that. Really, really good way. And they came across, so they were three months. Um, all of March, all of April, May, June. So they were four months packed in my bag. None of them came out smelly or anything. They all came out um, like they'd been packed, which was really quite interesting nice. considering they'd been, God knows how long, on a boat or sitting on a wharf in London. And Well, that's it, especially in London because it gets really um, muggy and, and yeah. wet and damp. Nothing was damp. Nothing was wet. Um, nice biosecurity had been through it all here at this end. Of course they had. Broke, <laughs> cut, all the, cut all the locks off my bag. Of course they had. Ignored the note saying the key for this one's in the blue bag. Well, <laughs> they probably did that one last and got the note and went, oh. I had... Um, <laughs> Our bad. <laughs> um, Danielle had poked in that I'd left behind some electronic stuff like my earbuds um, and my very expensive headset and, and like just a, um, not a wire, not a, a, it was a Bluetooth, but it was like a soft one. So there were two headsets, So there, and, but she had, they weren't in the locked part. She just shoved them in a plastic bag in the top and that they were all gone. <laughs> That's terrible. Like, yeah, okay. You enjoy, darling. You enjoy. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Whoever got that, I hope they enjoy it. Well, it was about $300 worth, so, yeah. <sighs> I'm sorry. That's terrible. Ah, 
I'd forgotten to pack it in the first place and then I thought about it later and thought I wasn't that worried about it. But Danielle had found it and had put it in for me, thinking she was doing the right thing. Oh, and, and she said, you've forgotten the keys, so I've shoved them in too. <laughs> and I had forgotten the keys. So we shoved them in my blue bag, thinking, oh, they'll work out that in my blue bag's got the keys for my black bag. But no, they cut the locks off my black bag. Of course they did. <laughs> ah, the things we do. So what else did we have this week? I mean, we've got so much going on. I'm actually, um, I, sorry, go on. It's been a good week. So I'm making some really serious decisions. I got um, Megan's headphones this morning. I didn't, Yay. I didn't get the ones that you got. I got the model below, but mm -hmm. they still, um, they dual pair. So she compared them to her phone and to her PC. Um, they've still got 40 hours of listening time. I mean, bloody hell. Um, and they charge quick too. Yeah, and I just thought I'm just going to get her those ones um, and I'm going to wait till people start paying. Everyone's a bit slow paying at the moment. It's a bit tricky. Um, no, I paid you. No, no. Yep, you did. I did pay you. Yes, I did pay you. you. Did. I was looking. Did I pay you? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you did. You're, I mean, you're about it. Um, everyone else is just a little bit slow and it, and everyone else is like a couple of places that I subcontract to are waiting to get paid to pay and it's just like, it, I hear you. This is the beginning of the financial year stuff. This is normal. <clears throat> it is. So we'll just sit back. And so as soon as that all starts picking up again, then I will um, I'm gonna go and buy myself the same set as yours. And yours, they're about 150 Australian dollars. That's about right, yeah. But I, like these ones here, like my ears hurt after a while. So these are really good. My my ears do hurt, but um, it's not. Uh, no, but they fit right over my ears. And the other thing I like is they fit over my earrings. I know that's a dumb thing, but they fit over my earrings. The other thing I like is that they've got a hard case, and they fold up really nicely into the hard case, and I can throw them into my bag with my computer oh. when I'm travelling, and so I don't have don't. to worry about destroying my headset, which I did with one set quite inadvertently and I had packed them correctly but they just don't travel well. Like well if, no. you've them, if you've got them loose, exactly. And all it takes is for it to bend slightly or something yep. to clip one of the um, bands and, and it cracks. Yep. But they fold up really nicely and I love the little case they come in. So, and I think I paid about 120 bucks for these in Canada probably two years ago. So I've done, and of course they're 12 yeah, that's good. They're 12 volt, not 24 volt. So I keep looking at them and thinking, oh, you've not blown up. How lovely. Because, of course, everything in Canada is on 12 volt. So they don't have PowerPoints like us where you turn the PowerPoint on and off. No, no they've got they're, they're the North American. You mean 110 volt, not 240. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, 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 not 12, Sorry. not battery. No, battery, that's exactly what I was thinking, is the yeah. little um, a, no. a Transformers is going no. to say, you can go and buy a Transformer. Yeah, no, so um, they're all the no, 110. So, no, 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 no. So most of these, if you've got the right things on them, they will um, charge perfectly on the 240 volts because they do the step down. Oh, I just, yeah, I've just got plugs on mine. Anyway. No, you should be fine. Yeah, I, I know. I bought a lot of um, a lot of my um, power packs. Yep. I just I just went out and got the Australian <clears throat> power cords for them because they're rated at one ten or two forty. They're wonderful. Okay. They're designed. I, um... They're literally designed to go international. You just need the power cords, and the power cords were really cheap to buy over here. My hair straightener was very glad to get home. Was it? Oh, yes. Well, you've asked me to work on 110 volt and I'm a 240 volt hair straightener. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it wouldn't have got really warm, would it? No. No. I used to, We've only got half as warm. You can do it. You can do it. Just a bit hotter. Just a bit hotter. <laughs> what hilarious. They're the things you, A, A, I don't know that I ever knew. Do you know, like oh, when I, I did. did. So I did, I, but yeah. I that's did, my but job. I, <laughs> 
when I took stuff over there, I don't think I knew, but it was like when I was over there and it was like I had some fantastic hair blow dry and it was no point bringing it home because once that, it hits that 240 volt, it goes, nope, can't do it. So, and I was talking to a couple of people who That's were on. That's right, um, the stuff that plugs straight in, yeah. No, no, you so my. Adapters. You've got, you can buy adapters to do them, but they're big and they're clunky and. Because I tossed up whether to bring my Instapot across. Because I had a beautiful big one. But when I read all the reviews and everything, it said that there is no, once you bring it into a stra in, into either UK or Australia, there is no warranty and nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, fair. I mean, I get that. It's, I do too. And I kind of thought, well, I've bought an Instapot because I don't want it to blow up in my face. I want it to turn off. But if I'm going to avoid that, then I may, yeah, no. Yeah, I get that. So everywhere I live, I leave an Instapot. You know, I totally get it. I know because, I, like I said to you, I love my Instapot. I it was the thing that I missed most when I came home and I didn't have it. Yep. And now I have it. It's like, oh, my God, it's so wonderful. I know. And, and nothing and says I, I love you like leaving an Instapot. <laughs> well, I know that um, when I move, because I'm going to have to move, that thing's coming with me. I don't care where I go. That thing's coming with me. Yep. I hear you. I hear you. So I've got one in Canada and one in – I left – One um, in London. My, yeah. Well, Hall. All. We were in all. All. Okay. All. H-U-L-L. -L. It's up on the East Coast. It's – Oh, opposite. Hull. Right. Okay. No, yeah. it's all. It's all. Right. All. Fine. Hull. Got it. <laughs> Hull. Yeah, I know. Right here. <laughs> uh, so what else? I'm, look, I'm really actually enjoying our um, setting up that click up and having all of that running now. That's just saving me so much time and energy and effort, uh, having it all together. I'm not worried about what I'm missing. An email comes in, I just forward it across. I still miss things, but they're in the list. So when I go through the list, I go, oh, yeah, I've got to answer that. That's fine. I can do that. Mm -hmm. So I did a fantastic thing this week and splurged on my business and I bought a 90-minute um, strategy session with um, Thrive. So I don't know if you've seen Thrive. Thrive is um, – Thrive admin is Mary Ann Tansley, fantastic lady who does um, Microsoft 365 inside out in her sleep. Um, and I got her to come in for 90 minutes and sort out my SharePoint, which drives me, no, was, was driving me insane. And I've now got it sorted. Good. So, oh, best, best money ever spent, spent 90 minutes. So anyone listening, Thrive Admin, absolutely fantastic. Um, she... So I'm now running, rather than all my SharePoint sitting up there in SharePoint, I'm running them all through Teams. So every Teams has a channel. So, so all the people that I work with have a channel. Yes. So within that channel, I can have all the planner boards, all the documents. Oh, nice. So those are the clients that I work with that work with monday.com. I can bring monday.com into that channel. So, and I've got like, passwords to zero and all sorts of stuff with each client that I need. I can store them all in one place that only I have access to. <clears throat> so like you, I've started up a channel for Charlie, but I can bring your click up into my teams. Yeah. Okay. So this channel that's Charlie is going to do everything that it does, but I don't have to do that bloody awful thing into SharePoint that we were doing that we couldn't do that was tricky but I can also invite so if we wanted to like for um for Bruce's waterside we can invite everyone into this channel and people can drop comments on what they want and what they need and we can all know exactly and it's all in one place nice I'll have to have a look because I think that works off of Microsoft Teams right um which is the Skype yeah, yeah, yeah. variation it's the variation on Skype much better than Skype. Oh, well, uh, actually, I don't know. I quite like Skype's really quite good. 
I yeah, I I went off of Skype a while ago because it became very resource intensive and one and you could see the difference in support once Microsoft got hold of it. Um, oh, okay. So I have two Skype. I have a WA number and I have a Canadian number. Nope, a North American number. You've got the Skype in numbers. Yep. Because I can then ring um, any number in Canada for nothing. Yes. Yeah. And especially when you're dealing with Canada pension plan. Yes, you need to be able to ring and, them and speak with them and sit on hold for all that amount of time. Uh, so longest so far has been three hours and 58 minutes. Oh, my God. But can you imagine if you – so it costs me nine bucks a month and when I get really clever, I'll buy a year's worth like at $54, which is bugger all. But can you imagine what that would cost? Yeah, I can because I know what it used to cost me to ring overseas. Yeah. And that was one reason why I actually went to Skype in the first place was I could do all that. Um, but Teams doesn't have the same capacity as Skype yet. No, no, no. Um, there's, a, there's very few that actually have that capacity. So I'll keep my North American Skype number for now? Fair. No, you should. Absolutely. And, of course, I'm still dealing with the CRA, Canada Revenue Agency. Why? Because my Canadian pension gets taxed. And then it gets taxed here, right? So I, I get $587 and, and Canada takes $87, but Australia taxes me on $587. Taxes. There's only ever one thing that's guaranteed. Two things guaranteed in this life, taxes and death. <laughs> no, there's four things. The sun will come up and the sun will go down and you will pay your taxes. <laughs> you will end up dying. There you go. So I just find that, do you know, like I just find that really comical. It's just like, oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. Oh, look, good luck with that. I'm, I'm, I don't well, envy you. I was, you know, something I never thought I'd have. So um, I do get his um, survivor's pension, which is kind of nice. It is nice. <laughs> hmm. Comes oh, in every yeah. week and it's like, thanks, honey, every month. Well, it's a couple of hundred bucks that you can just put to something else. Well, yes, except this month I'm going to pay to have his taxes done. Oh. That's what Next to Kin does. And I'm yeah, late. So, this will be and the I'm late, this, so they're going to find me final transaction isn't it this will be the final return yeah yep so this is the one i'm that's sorry right. that's awful i get it though ah. there were harder things i've done i'm sure there was so putting his tax in is really so i just i just have to get it done otherwise we're just going to get fined and it's like i'll spend the rest of my life playing the fines off <laughs> Pay someone to do it. Get them to do it. I'm, I, so, Brett, so he used to pay a guy to do it, and it was like about 60 Canadian dollars, which is fine. So my quote to do it is somewhere between 250 and 350. That, but is that because it's a um, final return? No, no, because they can, and I don't have any options. I don't have the facilities to do it on my own. I don't. I'm out of Canada. I can't do it online. Um, and even you if we had... You can't use a VPN to get in? No. No. Shame. No. Because now, this is really interesting. So while I lived in Canada with Brad and I didn't have a number, I could have used his online... We could have set him up online. But once I had left Canada, you can no longer use the online system in any way, shape, or form. That look, I heard that that's the same with the A the ATO as well. Um, so, because I, I heard um, someone was saying something about a, um, someone in New Zealand's having trouble accessing the the portal to put in their stuff because they can't verify themselves. They can't do the verification. Now I couldn't a strong yeah. enough verification, and they're like, surely there's a way around this, and I'm like. Actually, no. That, no that, 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 there's actually a really good reason why there's not. You can't do this. Yep. So I could put 
I had my MyGov portal I could use overseas, and that was really Correct. easy and simple. Yep. But my, when I when they did the MyGov ID, which I already had, yes. Well, that wasn't in when I left, and I tried to do that overseas, but it wouldn't let me do it because of the time difference. Oh, really? Hmm. So I had well, to maybe wait. Maybe I don't like, have a MyGov ID. I've got that's the one where you, you take your... Um, Oh, that's on the no. I never finished that because I yep, had to go no. and get someone to verify my photo and. <coughs> so and I could do that. that, and I'm doing the whole no. no. <laughs> so once I got back into Australia and I did it, and it went through in about five seconds flat, and I, then I said to the guy, I said, "So why couldn't I do it overseas?" He went, "Well, he said, because you're overseas, and and how do we know who you are?" I said, well, how do you know who I am here? He, he said, I have your IP address. He said, we have all this. Okay. I ended up biting my tongue. Interesting, isn't it? Anyway, so I now have everything that I need to have and my portal and my pay-as-you-go and all set up and, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I was thankful I had my ADR <laughs> and my ABN um, portal access and my... Um, my my gov portal, yeah. So, not that I use, not that I use my gov much. I did, I did, because I still put in my Australian tax returns. How much have um, you earned this earned this year? None, nothing. Um, really? see, that, that's what my accountant's for. <laughs> I just sent him all the stuff and said, make it happen. <laughs> no. No, I, I actually have this wonderful thing from the ATO that says your income this year, zero. Really? A couple of people I've I've said that through and they've rung me and they've gone, you had no earnings? That's no, correct. I didn't. Nope. Yeah. Nope. No earnings whatsoever. How did you live? Well, where would you like me to start? Not very well. Not with healthcare cover. Yeah. Yeah, that's the scariest thing. Having So the first time I got COVID was all right because I had healthcare covered. No one knew what COVID was, so that was really a bonus. But, of course, come – so that was December. Come March, your healthcare cover was cancelled and none of us knew. Mine wasn't, thank God, but – Hmm. No, I had traveller insurance. I didn't have healthcare cover, so it's what. Same. No, I had travel insurance, and it was they wouldn't cover you for health for COVID. No, they wouldn't try to cover you for COVID, but they would cover you for other things. So as long yep. as I didn't report it was COVID, I was fine. Which I thought was kind of difficult if I ended up in hospital and couldn't breathe. What's wrong with it? Don't say COVID, you know. But um, and I do you want to get do you, do you want to get paid? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it kind of opens up a whole, to me, that opens up a whole can of worms because I, when I took out my travel insurance, COVID didn't exist. Correct. So I took it out in full face that I was going to be covered for, and I took up out top, top travel insurance so that whatever happened, and if I got hit by a, a snowball in the middle of a desert, I was still covered. Um and then all of a sudden you weren't covered. And it was like, well, so what yeah. else can you what else can you take away from me while I'm over here waiting and I've already paid you? Yeah. So that opened up a whole and then they wouldn't renew it. So then I took them to Africa. Yeah. I didn't even know I could do that. If I'd realized I would do that, I probably would have done it because I couldn't get mine renewed. And so then I ended up having to pay for travel insurance. I paid for immigration insurance there's a company over in canada that covers immigrants yeah that's fair yep so i went under that one and um <laughs> and, and all the, the visa stuff that goes on like have you got a visa well kind of i'm waiting I did. for it to I did. I did i did and i applied before i had to and i've not heard anything and um yeah, yeah well I, I actually applied to get my um length of stay extended about three months before it ran out mm. and it wasn't extended until three months after it ran out that's mm. how long it was just taking to process things 
And then I got that notification and the very next day they cancelled my next set of flights. <laughs> so I'm back on the portal re, re, re submitting everything I had plus all the other stuff, repaying my fee. Um, and that's because a hundred dollars, hundred dollars every time you apply. Oh, it was seven hundred Australian. Oh, gosh, I, I I was doing my button my books today, and I went through, and I went, what was that? Oh, that's what Ooh. that was for. Yeah, it was seven hundred Australian each each time. So is that just for a standard length of stay extension? Um, I can't remember. I ninety six, I think. Yeah. I sixty, I sixty maybe. I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to look up the number, but yeah. no, no, it, it's the standard. When you go on, it says I need to extend my length of stay. Um, and you know, you're saying because either you're sick or you know, something, someone's dying or something, and basically, it's yeah, I'm going to stay until I can get home. Like I'll leave as soon as I can. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I I, I would have gone <laughs> months ago. <laughs> so I I lengthened mine for six months. So I had six months when I got there. Then I took it through another six months for December. And then in the November I put it through for a 12 months because it was just like I'm tired of paying a hundred bucks. Um so I put it through in November and and it came through in June. Yes. I, I actually applied. I, I applied for a six-month extension the first time because we're thinking, you know, and then the second time I applied for 12 months Yeah, because we, we just had no idea. And as it turned out, it ended up being about eight months. Yes. So I left in the September and my visa ran, ran out in the December. Yeah, I left. Um, mine ran out in the October and I left in the February, and I was trying to get it extended mm. to the next July. Um, now, I had to, had, they actually had progressed it because I'd gone down to get all my uh, biometrics done, mm. you know, where they fingerprint you and do all those things. Twice I've done that's had that's done. It's like, I'm, I'm well known. <laughs> um, and then I heard nothing. I, I still have heard nothing on it. Like, it'll be closed now because I've left the country, but. Mm. I wasn't too concerned. I just had all my printouts. So whenever we would travel and go down to um, the, the, air, the, the, the airline, <laughs> I had these little folders. So if they ever said to me, you're not supposed to be here. I've been doing it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I know. But it gets a little bit... Um... I mean, wherever I went was my went my passport and three visas and application forms and just in case you were ever pulled up. Yep. Yep. And I know we we lived in a um, on the ninth floor in this condo building, and the fire alarm would go off at midnight, and I'd race around and I would grab my my passport, my visa, and my laptop, and down nine flights of stairs I'd run, and Brad would go. Why are you taking that? It was like because if I don't, what do you I'm do? on the I'm on a. I've got no ID, and B. I'm on the next boat home. Yeah, yeah. If that that's lost, yeah, yeah, yeah. My my passport I kept um in a bag, and yep. I'd have it in a zippered section, and <laughs> and I'd just pick it up and off I'd go. Yep, I'd go out and someone say, "Oh, we need to see your passport." Yep. So I said to me, do you carry your passport with you? Like, yeah, I do yeah, actually. Yeah, you know, you're not supposed to. I'm like, yeah, well, you know that they ask me for it. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's a couple of times I didn't go out with it and that was fine. But if I was going, like if we were traveling and stuff, you can't actually get through the airports unless you've got um, your passport with you. They won't no. take my, they wouldn't accept just my driver's license. No, because you, you're a guest in the country. Yeah, and I mean, fair, I get it. And these are the rules and these are the things that I was quite happy to um, comply with. This is just what I needed to do. I'm, get, I'm a guest there. I'm visiting. And I was quite happy to apply. Brad wasn't. She's my wife. Right. Yes, but I know. And I'm like, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I know. It's fine, honey. I have it all. Okay, let's just. It's fine. But, you've, but you're my wife. 
Yes, I know. I am. So um, next week, what, what's, our, what's our goals for next week? Okay, so I need to do some stuff in my bookkeeping business to finish it up and get it sorted because I need to get that up and rolling by the beginning of August. Um, so that's my big goal next week, I think. Good. Excellent. Hi. So apart from me putting in some um, more procedures around my team and yep. getting um, my processes and procedures and reporting and communications more smooth with my team, uh, I really want to start sitting down and saying, right, this day I'm spending and I'm either going to do bookkeeping or I'm going to record videos and do tutorials and start to actually oh, set, how set aside a day where I can start doing that again because I that's the stuff I love doing. Oh, the learning stuff. Yeah. All righty. Well, I hope everyone has a great week after all this. Um, we'd love to hear what your plans are and what you're, what you're going to be doing uh, and any challenge you're having because, you know, as you can tell, we enjoy just talking. Have a good week, guys. Bye. And that brings us to the end of Tiffy Time for the week. We hope you've enjoyed the episode and we hope you join us next week. See you later, guys. <laughs>